Well, hello there and welcome once again. The Bible says in Psalms 110 verse 3 that your people shall be willing in the day of your power. I believe that we are in the last days and I believe that we are living in the days where the power of God will be demonstrated on the earth by the sons and daughters of God. I believe that we are about to see a move of God like has never been witnessed before. I strongly am convinced that the days of the apostles of old is returning again. Where the Bible says that God did great signs and wonders through the apostles. I believe that it is this move of God that will bring in, that will shake nations and bring in a massive harvest of souls. I also believe that it will elevate the status of the church um, within society. And I decided to do this video to share um, a life experience that happened with me. Uh, something that will go down in my history and in my memory of the power of God that can be experienced when people pray. You know, Jesus taught us to, he taught us a, a parable, how that men ought always to pray and not to think. And most times in my interactions with believers again and again, I realized that uh, the place of prayer has not really been utilized to its fullness in terms of its potential, its capacity, its ability, and the things it can make possible in the lives of believers. And I believe that in these last days, one of the calls will be a return to the place of prayer. I have seen the power of prayer. I have seen God move things in favor of His people when they pray. And what I'm about to share with you is a life experience that happened with me that I believe will challenge your faith and will propel you towards believing for what the Bible calls the manifestation of the songs. So if you're ready, let's get to the let's cut to the chase. So it happened a few years ago in the year 2018, uh, precisely around uh, June, July. Uh, we we had a mission trip to one of the local towns in Borno State. Borno State is one amongst the 36 states in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, located at the northeastern uh, region of Nigeria. Uh, is a state that plays host to uh, several ethnic groups like the Kanuri, the Bura, the Margi, and others. And this town specifically was in the southern part of the state. So we were on a mission trip and uh, there was a meeting that was characterized by largely uh, the attendance of young people and it was to hold for about two days. Well, we had gone into prolonged intercession and prayer preparing for that meeting as the custom should be every time you are preparing for a mission trip to a new territory, taking time out to pray to speak into the territory and create a favorable spiritual atmosphere that will allow for the move of God in such meetings. And we had done that. And there are things that the Lord had revealed to us about that and which I will um, conceal so that we can get to the root of this video. So we got there. We arrived on a Friday. And I noticed that while we were entering into this town, it began to rain suddenly. So when we got to the house, we, we are going to stay in. Uh, the mother of the house confirmed to us that uh, it had not rained for over 15 years. Uh, 15 days, rather. It had not rained for over 15 days. Uh, while, so our coming in was the first rain that they were seeing in getting to three weeks. So well, as usual, I took that as a sign. That was a good news because the Bible is always uh, always placing rain as a symbol for divine visitation. 
So we got into prayers, we rested, and then prepared for the next day. So the next day, when I was in the meeting, wonderful meeting, and I was preaching. And while I was preaching, now if you're a preacher and you're listening to this, you will bear witness to what I'm about to say. And there are times when you are preaching the gospel or you are teaching the word of God and then there are some things you will say not because you thought about them it, it's almost as if you were speaking by inspiration it sort of bypasses your mind and goes straight from your spirit to your mouth so that was exactly what I experienced I heard myself say that uh, it was more like I was prophesying and that one of the signs uh, to confirm what the Lord would do through this conference or through this uh, meeting where was that there was going to be rain the next day on Sunday and considering the antecedents that there had not been rain for nearly three weeks in those parts you were not assured uh, by weather forecast that there was definitely going to rain for as a matter of fact that particular day was hot so we were not so sure that it was going to rain but I said it already and you know these kind of things you know when you, when it said in public the congregation greeted it with you know a note of uncertainty and it was like from their looks to me it was like I had just put myself into some trouble so but I said yeah, anyway and we finished that day of the meeting. It was a wonderful time in the presence of God. Souls were saved. And we left and went back home. And then I remembered while sleeping that night the story of Elijah in the Bible in 1 Kings chapter 18. And James, one of the apostles of the New Testament, told us in his epistle how that for Elijah to cause the rain to stop for three and a half years and to cause the rain to come again, he had to pray seven. And we know the popular scripture that says that the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous man is made of heaven. So I knew that this was a prophecy that had been released, but it would take the womb of prayer to bring its manifestation. Now at this point, let me stop to say this. You know, in the word of God, 1 Timothy 1.18, Paul admonished Timothy, his son, uh, to understand the art of warfare for the fulfillment of prophecy. And many a times, just because God has said it to us, it appeared nice, it sounded good, doesn't just mean it will come to pass. We have a role to play. Every prophecy, I believe, comes from the Lord. But I also believe that it's conditional, meaning that there are rules of engagement. It's coming to pass applies under certain terms and conditions. And I, I really desire that in these last days, believers will really understand the art of spiritual warfare and praying through the fulfillment of certain prophecies. Not just prophetic words hanging over individuals, but over families, over communities, over territories, over nations. As it is said in Isaiah, that who has ever had such a thing, shall a nation be born at once? Say, but as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth. I believe that we can see great revivals, we can see massive shifts and turnaround in the economy of nations. I believe that we can see greater move of God like never before if we learn the place of prayers and warfare for the fulfillment of every prophetic word that is given I mean just saying this now I can sense a very strong atmosphere of the spirit of God right now as I'm talking to you and I believe that in the course of this video God is going to be releasing to that person who is watching an uncommon and unusual grace for prayers, an uncommon and unusual spirit of grace and supplication 
so we can enter into our prayer closet and birth the will of God on the earth as it is in heaven. Back to my story. So I woke up in the night around 2 a.m. Myself and a friend, we went for the trip together. And uh, having discussed my contemplations before going to bed, we decided it was best that we, we get up and pray. So we began to pray. Now, our interest should have been preparing and praying for the last day of the meeting. But realized that a word had already gone forth and it looked to us like the name of God was at stake. So we were tense. I mean, I was really tense. I felt like, man, if this didn't come to pass, it was going to ruin my reputation. People were not going to believe what I would say. How do I stand and face them the next day? Well, I thought it was all about me, but it was beyond me anyway. So we got into prayer. We prayed from 2 a.m., 3 a.m., past 3 a.m. We kept praying. Um, somewhere around 6 a.m., I decided to move in haste, as some of us will do. When you have prayed for a while and you don't seem to find your expectation coming to pass, Sometimes we get we get overcome by haste. And the Bible says, He that believes will not make haste. So we start um, we start to become sensual in our interacting with the fulfillment of our expectation. What I mean is we begin to try to look at physical signs, not knowing that the first sign will be the witness we get in the spirit realm that what we are praying through has been fulfilled so um, we started to pray so we prayed and um, it was 7 a.m. now by this time I opened the window to check the sky and see what was going on I mean if you ever read the story of Elijah in the Bible he kept asking someone to check for him and you will not believe what happened. The sunlight that I, I I I saw coming out, it was like there was no hope that it was going to rain. At just 7 a.m., the sun was so bright, it looked like it was 11 a.m. or almost 12 noon. Something died inside of me. I went back and said, God, is this going to work at all? So we, we got on praying, praying. By 9 a.m., I mean, the sun was so, it, it, it became hot. So we had to turn on the fan in the room where we were. Now, at this point, we realized that we had been praying for over seven hours. We had become tired. And uh, physically, we were weary. So we're only Go, we only kept on going because we knew something had to happen. At that point, I can't really say if I had faith again. I can't really say I had faith that anything was going to come to pass. We just kept on it. And you know, there, there could be someone watching right now. And you, may, you may have been in that place in life where you have uh, done everything you know to do, including prayer. But the more you pray, the more it seems like you see the opposite happening. And then you begin to feel your confidence and your faith reducing. We are at that point. At, 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 at that time, I had never even researched or believed that it was going to come true for us. So we kept on praying. By 10.30, I lost faith. By this time, I'd, I'd gone to urinate about two or three times, you know, and then that was just a cover to check the sky, and the sun just kept shining. And it was as if I, I felt like the sun was fighting our prayers. I felt like he decided to come out that day. Well, you know, sometimes when you are so frustrated, inanimate things, you, you, you begin to treat them like living things. 
So I felt that the sun and everything in, in the weather was trying to frustrate what we were doing. So we kept on praying. We kept on praying. Till past 11 a.m. I think that prayer ended around 11 30. And um, it ended not really because we knew it was going to happen. But we were left with no other option but to trust God. At that point, I had to just hold on to the word of God because there were no signs physically or even spiritually that it was going to rain. And there are seasons of prayer and intercession that you will get to as a believer where all you will have is to trust the word that has come from you. I believe, I'm of the opinion that there is a slight difference between faith and trust. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith is, is created in our spirit through the proceeding word of God that comes to us. But then trust is holding on to a word that had come before. Now when a word comes to you, there's something it does to your spirit. It comes with life and an awakening. It brings an experience that makes you know that it is real and your expectations will definitely come to pass. But this time around, I can't say we had that. All we had to do was just hold on to what God had said. And uh, there was just a little confidence inside of me. So we rounded up the prayers because we knew we had to rest. We didn't sleep um, almost through the night. We had to rest and prepare for the meeting that was going to be you know, taken off by two people. And then something happened. Something unthinkable happened. Around 1 p.m. You must understand that by this time, it was so bright, especially at noon. It was so bright, like there was no sign rain was going to fall at all. And then around 1 p.m., because the bedroom was outside uh, the room we stayed. It was more like a compound house, so we had to go outside to take our bed. The bedroom was separated from the main room. I noticed that there was a change in the sky. This was around one. It had become cloudy. So something there was a spark in my spirit again. I said, okay, God was gonna do it this time. So I began to pray while I was there. I finished taking my bath. When I came out, all of a sudden the sky had become dark in a short period. And by the time it was quarter to two p.m., it began to rain. It rained, and here's how God did it. it. It rained not so much to disturb or to stop in that people from coming for the meeting, but it rained enough to show that the sign had been fulfilled. And it rained, I remember when we were going to the meeting in a tricycle, we had to cover up umbrellas and everything. And when I got to the hall of the meeting, you must understand that by this time my confidence was alive. I never thought about what I was going to preach. I never thought about anything. I just wanted the rains to fall. Because I knew what that sign, when fulfilled, would do to the faith of the people. And sure enough, when we got to the meeting, the place was packed up. A crowd of people. The building was uncompleted, so some people had to sit on the windows and some stood outside. I could literally sit in the hall and I saw people standing outside. And we had one of the greatest service of my life. It was powerful. We saw souls saved, baptism of the Holy Spirit on young people. A move of God hit that place. And there were more prophecies that came around concerning that territory. That five years later, most of those prophecies had been fulfilled, like the um, repair of the infrastructure within the city, which was absent when we came, the establishment of a national institution in that place. And right now, that small town has become a place of national uh, 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 attraction. And 
we've seen God produce great people from that place. I've had to interact with people who were in that meeting years ago, and God is really doing great things. And we are still praying that um, we will experience revival in those parts of Nigeria. But I shared this testimony because I was led by the Spirit to encourage someone not to believe up until you see God come to you. There is such a thing as the power of prayer. If God's people will be willing to wait on Him, to stay even when their flesh is wearied out, to stay even when there seems to be no sign any longer that your expectations will come to you, but to keep staying until the hand of God comes true for you. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18, Jesus asked the question, he said, if the Son of Man returns, will he still find faith? Will he still find those who are able to take hold of the horns of the altar and to pray themselves into the promises of God? The promises of God are here and in them. Everything God told you will come to pass if you are willing to sit in the place of prayer and intercession until they come into manifestation. And I pray that in this season and in this moment of your life, you will see the hand of God move in diverse ways. You will see the power of prayer and you will have living proofs, experiences that will make you a witness that the God that we serve, Jesus Christ, is he who was dead and is alive forever. God bless you.